Testing one, two, mic check. Testing one, two, mic check. started we're gonna get started all the ladies cover your heads men uncover your heads you're gonna stand face the room they that trust in the lord they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion shall be as mount zion which cannot be removed which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. But abideth forever, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about His people. So the Lord is round about His people. From henceforth, even forever. From henceforth, even forever. For the for the rod of the wicked, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot. 
shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands let the lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity unto iniquity do good o lord do good o lord unto those that be good unto those that be good and to them that are upright and to them that are upright in their hearts in their hearts i have read psalms 125 verses 1 through 4 may the lord add a blessing to the reading doing and hearing of his word in jesus holy and righteous name we pray amen amen hello everybody welcome to israel's church of living god i'm brother rodney and brother mark will be reading today uh, happy sabbath to everybody uh, the title of the lesson today is by the fear of the lord men depart from evil by the fear of the lord men depart from evil see and you know we used to always say, people don't listen to you until you put a whooping on them. Then they'll listen to you. Well, that's the same thing with the Lord. Men are not going to really listen to the Lord until he comes to put a whooping on them. Then they're going to start listening. And that's what the Lord ultimately is going to have to do to this man. He's going to have to put a whooping on him. Now. Let's go to let's go first to first Samuel and happy Sabbath to everybody and for everybody that's joining us via Internet. Happy Sabbath to you. First Samuel, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. First Samuel two and one. When you get it, brother, go ahead and start reading. First Samuel two and one. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. Uh -huh. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Uh -huh. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. Go ahead. For there is none beside thee. Uh -huh. Neither is there any rock like our God. Neither is, is there any rock like our God. Go ahead and read. And we know everybody knows who the rock is. That rock is Christ, right? Verse 3, go ahead. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Uh -huh. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, uh -huh. and by him actions are weighed. He is a God of knowledge. So you can't be ignorant when it comes to the word of God and when it comes to serving this God. You can't be ignorant. You got to have some knowledge. You get the knowledge from the Bible. Let's go now. Let's go to Psalm 96. Psalm 96. 96, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Psalm 96 and 2. When you get it, go ahead and start reading. 96 and 2. Go ahead. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Uh -huh. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Go ahead. For the Lord is great uh -huh. and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. See, our God is to be feared above all gods. And I'm going to show you why. He is to be feared above all gods. Well, there's only one God, so. <laughs> but, you know, men worship other deities and other gods. But there's only truly one God, and that is the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. So he is to be feared above all gods. Verse 5, go ahead. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Uh-huh. But the Lord made the heavens. The Lord made the heavens. The God of Israel. Skip to verse 10. Go ahead. Verse 10. Uh-huh. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. Uh-huh. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Uh-huh. He shall judge the people righteously. Skip to verse 12. Skip to verse 12. Go ahead. Rejoice in the Lord. Ye righteous, uh -huh. and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Keep reading. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. Okay, where are you at? Because you're supposed to skip to verse 12. 96 and verse 12. Yeah. Let the field be joyful uh -huh. and all that is therein. Go ahead. 
Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice uh -huh. before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, see, the Lord is coming to judge the earth. This is this is the God of Israel. He's coming to judge the earth. Go ahead and read. He shall judge the world with righteousness uh -huh. and the people with his truth. Now, so he's coming to judge the world with righteousness. So if you deserve to uh, get punished, then you're going to get punished. But if you don't deserve to get punished, then you won't get punished. But you see what he said? Be, uh, before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. And where is this truth at? It is this word right here, this book. It's a, that's where the truth is. It is in this book. His word is truth. That's what John 17 says, right? We're at Genesis. We're going to Genesis, the sixth chapter, Genesis 6. Genesis 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Genesis 6 and 5. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And God, and God saw that the wickedness of man. You know, God came to judge this earth before. So just in case you don't believe that God's coming to judge the earth, look at what he is doing right here. During the times of Noah, he came and judged. And it is evidence that we had a flood. I know some people say, well, no, there wasn't no flood. Six, uh, chapter 6, verse 5. Go ahead and read it. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh -huh. and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Uh huh. So man was evil at this time upon the earth. Go ahead. This was during the time of Noah. Go ahead and read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Uh huh. And it grieved him at his heart. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I will destroy man from whom I have created. From the face of the earth, uh -huh. both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. Uh -huh. For it repenteth me that I have made them. It repenteth me that I have made them. Now, what did the creeping things and the beast and all, what did they do? They didn't do nothing. They were just there. So the Lord was so mad, he, I'm going to kill them too. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Uh-huh. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh-huh. So Noah found grace in the eyes. So he had some mercy on Noah. Skip to verse 13. Skip to verse 13. Go ahead. And God said unto Noah, uh -huh. The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence uh -huh. through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Uh-huh. Now, can you imagine that? The earth is so wicked that God said, you know what? I'm going to destroy all flesh. I'm going to destroy all flesh. This is how wicked men were. But go ahead and read. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark. Uh-huh. And shall pitch it within and without skip with to, pitch. Skip to verse 17. Go ahead. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth uh -huh. to destroy all flesh. Where, wherein is the breath of life uh -huh. from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now, do you know any other God can do something like this? You don't know no other God who can do something like this. Destroy all flesh. He said it, and it was done. Go ahead and read. But with thee will I establish my covenant, uh -huh. and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy son's wives with thee. Skip to verse 21. Skip to verse 21. Go ahead. And take thou unto thee of all, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, uh -huh. and thou shalt gather it See, to thee. See, at this time, they weren't eating everything. You know, like a man eating everything now, right? But he said, take with thee all things which may be eaten. So that at this time, they were eating only herbs, no meat, just herbs. But go ahead and read. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, uh -huh. and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee uh -huh. and for them. Thus, sit, thus did Noah according uh -huh. to all that God commanded him. 
so did he. So now, so Noah done what the Lord had commanded him to do, right? But let's see what moved him. Let's see what moved him. Let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, Hebrews 11. Let's see what moved him, what caused him to do this, to obey God. Hebrews 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Now, faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. the evidence of things not seen. Go ahead. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Skip to verse 7. Go ahead. By faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Uh-huh. Move with so, so now, hold on. So, because God just warned him first. Hey, this is what's getting ready to happen. And I want you to go ahead and build this ark. And Noah believed God, and he built the ark. But look what he moved with. Read that verse again. Verse 7. Uh-huh. By faith. Noah being warned of God uh -huh. of things not seen as yet. Go ahead. Moved with fear. fear. That's what moved them right there, fear. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what motivates men. It is fear. God has to put something on you in order for you to move. Ain't that what he did with Jonah? Jonah, he said, Jonah, go to preach to Nineveh. Jonah jumped on a ship and said, No, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I'm not going to Nineveh or nothing. And jumped on that ship. But then once the Lord tossed him in the belly of that well, once he got up out of that uh, be the belly of that well, he went running right to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Say it took three days to get to Nineveh, but he made it there in a day and a half. Fear. God put that fear on him. So Noah moved with fear. Verse 7. Read it starting from the top again. Verse 7. Uh-huh. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, uh -huh. moved with fear, uh -huh. prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he co condemned the world, uh -huh. and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So now if Noah hadn't believed God, <laughs> we probably wouldn't be here. Somebody, We'd be reading about somebody else if Noah hadn't feared God. We be reading about somebody else. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Uh-huh. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out unto a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, uh -huh. obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Uh-huh. So by now he said, Abraham, by faith, when he was called of God, uh, went out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance. Obeyed. See, that's a big word right there, obeyed. And that's what you have to do with God. You have to obey him. Go ahead and read. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Uh-huh. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in t tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, uh -huh. the heirs with him of the same promise. Go ahead. For he looked for a city which hath foundations. You see, uh, you see. Uh, uh, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob was still alive during the times of Abraham. Mm -hmm. He was still alive. He was about 16 years old at this time. But go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh -huh. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, uh -huh. whose builder and maker is God. Skip to verse 17. Skip to verse 17. Go ahead and read. By faith, uh -huh. Abraham when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Uh huh. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Uh huh. Of whom? Now look how much faith Abraham had that he was going to offer up his son unto God. But why did he do this? Go ahead and read. Verse 18. Uh huh. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh huh. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. See, that's what Abraham was thinking. Well, if uh, if the seed gonna be called through Isaac, then if I kill him, God has to raise him up. Up, oh, cause God can. He's not a liar, so he's got to raise him up. Go ahead and read. Verse nineteen. Uh huh. Accounted that God was able to raise him up. Uh huh. Even from the dead. Even from the dead. Go ahead. From whence also he received him. 
and a figure. Now, let's go back and read about this. Let's go back and read about this. Let's go to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Genesis 22. That is really something. He had so much faith in God that, look, if I do kill my son, the Lord just going to raise him from the dead. That's how much faith he had. But look at what moved him. Look at what moved him. Genesis 22, Genesis 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 22 and 1. Because, see, nowadays men don't fear God. But, see, I'm going to show you the prophets, they feared God. The, the men of God feared God. Genesis 22 and 1. Genesis 22 and 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham uh -huh. and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Uh -huh. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, uh -huh. and offer him and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, uh -huh. which I will tell thee now, of. Now, how many of us will do this? You know, God come to you and say, look, offer your son up to me. You'll be looking at God like, is there another way we can do this? I got to kill my son? But Abraham thinking, well, if I kill him, he's the son of the promise. If I kill him, then the God's got, got to raise him up from the dead. Go ahead and read. So he didn't give no back talk. He didn't say nothing about, you know, can we do this another way or none of that. He just grabbed his son and took him to the place. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh-huh. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. Uh-huh. And took two of his young men with him. Go ahead. And Isaac, his son, and, and clave the wood for the burnt offering. Uh-huh. And rose up and went unto the place of which God had told See, him. See, Abraham, he just, okay, let's, I got to do this. So come on, Isaac. And took two other young men with him. He's getting ready to offer up his son to the Lord. Skip to verse 6. Skip to verse 6. Go ahead and read it. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. Uh-huh. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. Uh-huh. And they went both of them together. And so, uh, so Isaac, like, something going on here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Verse 7, uh -huh. and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, uh -huh. my son. And he said, Behold the fire of the wood, uh -huh. but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He said, the fire of the wood is here, but where is the lamb for the offering at? Mm -hmm. Something is funny here. But go ahead and read. Verse 8, uh -huh. and Abraham said, My son. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Uh -huh. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. Uh -huh. And Abraham built an, built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son. Uh-oh. Now Isaac understands now I'm the offering. Mm -hmm. I am the offering. Go ahead and read. And bound Isaac, his son, uh -huh. and laid him on the altar upon the wood. But how many of us could do something like this? You know, a child that we have watched, you know, uh, from the time that they came out of the womb up until, I guess, Isaac must have been about five or six years old right here, maybe a little older. And now how can you, you know, you know think in your mind to just go ahead and sacrifice him like this? Abraham had so much faith in God that he knew if I kill this boy, the Lord just going to raise him up from the dead. But how many men could do this, though? How many men could do this? You really have to have some faith in God to do this. But I'm going to show you what else you got to have, too. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 10. Uh-huh. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Uh-huh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Go ahead. And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Uh -huh. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. I uh, know he had to be like this. Whew. I'm getting <laughs> ready to sacrifice my son to the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead and read. For now I know that thou fearest God. But for now I know that thou fearest God. This is one of the things that moved him. It was fear. 
it was fair. Read that again. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, Uh neither do thou anything unto him. Go ahead. For now I know that thou fearest God. Now I know that thou fearest God. Uh Uh-huh. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, Uh thy only son from me. Thy only son from me. So Abraham was also moved with fear. Not just faith, but he had fear of the Lord. And so this is what caused him to say, you know what? I got to do this. Go ahead and read. Verse 13. Uh Uh-huh. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. Uh Uh-huh. And Abraham went and took the ram. Go ahead. And offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Now, the Lord provided him a lamb. But you see what moved Abraham. Not just faith, but fear in the Lord moved him. And we need to have fear of the Lord in us. And many of us have the fear of the Lord in us already. That's why we're here on the Sabbath. Let's go now. Let's go to James, the second chapter. James 2. James, the second chapter. Because you don't have fear of God. You're not going to do what he tells you to do. You're simply not going to do it. And that's why you see so many people on Sunday at church, and you don't see that a whole lot of people on, uh, 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 keeping the Sabbath because they don't fear God. James, the second chapter, James 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. James 2 and verse 20. Go ahead and read. But would thou know, O vain man, uh-huh. that faith without works is dead? See, faith without works is dead. You can say, I got faith all you want to, but if you don't have no works, it means absolutely nothing. Because, you know, we hear the Sunday Christians, they always saying they got faith in God, they got faith in God, but when it comes to works, they deny him. He is denied. Go ahead and read. Verse 21. Uh Uh-huh. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? See, he was justified by works. See, he said his works... Uh, the, the works that he did accounted for him. He's like, now I know that thou fearest the Lord, seeing that thou has, uh, you was getting ready to offer up your son, your only son. I know you fear me now. So Abraham was justified by his works. Read that again, verse 21. Verse 21. Uh Uh-huh. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Uh Uh-huh. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See, when he had offered up his son. When he had offered up his son. Go ahead. Verse 22. Uh Uh-huh. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Uh Uh-huh. And by works was faith made perfect? Uh Uh-huh. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter, Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Proverbs 1 and 7. See, you have to show your faith by your works, but you have to have some fear of the Lord in order to move. That's what's going to cause you to move. It is the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs 1 and 7. Go ahead and read it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh Uh-huh. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. See, that's what you are. You are a fool if you don't uh, 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 take take into consideration or do the instructions of the Lord. He said, fear, the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of knowledge. And so when you start fearing God, then you're going to take on more and more knowledge. And you're going to start not just hearing it, but you're going to start doing it. Because you'll find out the sins that you were doing were exceedingly sinful. And then ultimately, you don't want to go into the lake of fire. So you are very wise if you hear this word and you start doing it. See, the ones that, they, some people, they hear this word, but then they won't do it. The wise people hear this word, and then those are the ones that do it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. A lot of people don't want to be instructed. 
They don't want to be instructed. They don't want to be put out. Or, you know, uh, 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 you know, people don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, put out, meaning that, you know, I don't want to do this because it's going to cause me not to go to work today and get that money. Because a lot of people do that. They go, they, instead of keeping the Sabbath, they go off to work so they can make that extra money. But when you fear the Lord, you say, you know what? Because I remember a lot of times, you know, a broker would call me and say, well, look, we got this loan for you, and it's going to pay this much. And I said, well, when is it? Well, it's on Saturday. I said, well, I can't do that. <laughs> Y'all paying good, but I can't do that loan. Why can't you do the loan? Because it's the Sabbath. I fear God. That's why I didn't do it. Otherwise, I, be, I would do just like everybody else do. Go and get that bag. Mess around, get out there, going to get that bag, and then your truck break down or you have a bad accident. Because that's what the Lord will do to you. Especially, don't you know the ones that know better and don't do, that know his word and don't do? The Lord is going to whoop them with many stripes. They know it. They know what does say the Lord, but they will not do it. Read that verse again, verse 7. Read it again. Verse 7. Uh-huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh-huh. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see what Mark just called you? <laughs> Let's go now. Let's go to Proverbs, the 14th chapter. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Proverbs 14 and 16. See, you got some, you know, you this takes some courage to do this. This takes this take some courage, especially when people are at you all the time. Because people are at me every week somebody is at me about the word of God. Literally, they are at me every week about the word of God. You wrong about this, you wrong about that. You know why? Because they don't have no fear of God. They don't have no fear of God. Proverbs 14 and 16. Proverbs 14 and 16. Go ahead and read it. A wise man feareth uh -huh. and departeth from evil. See, that's what a wise man going to do. He's going to fear and he's going to depart from evil. He knows that, hey, man, if I do this, that there's going to be some retribution for this. So what does he do? He departs from that evil that he was getting ready to do. Because you, you ain't going to tell me that you don't have the mind to say, well, should I do right or should I do wrong? Should I walk righteous before God or should I sin before God? You got that mind. And if you don't, that means you have thrown in the towel already. You're just going to do what you want to do. You're saying skip God. That's what you want. You're going to do what you want to do. Go ahead and read, brother. A wise man feareth, uh-huh. A wise man feareth uh -huh. and departeth from evil. Go ahead. But the fool rageth and is confident. The fool rageth in his confidence. Skip to verse 25. Skip to verse 25. Go ahead. A true witness delivereth souls, uh -huh. but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. You better listen up today. You better listen up. He said a true witness. He does what? Delivereth souls. Delivereth souls. And that's what we come to do. We come to deliver souls. I'm not just out here preaching the word just so I can show you that you don't know nothing and I do. No, I'm trying to deliver souls. So the Lord, I get a feather in my cap and the Lord say, well, you come on in the back door, Rodney. I don't have to come in the front. You come on in the back door. I'll take the back door. And then, if the Lord don't raise me up in the first resurrection, I'll take the second one. Just as long as he lets me into the kingdom. That's what I'm mainly concerned about. Winning souls. Go ahead and read. A true witness delivereth souls. Uh-huh. But a deceitful witness speaketh lies. Go ahead. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Uh, uh, the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Because you know you get bold once you 
uh, understand the word of God, you start hearing it and do it, you get a little bold, don't you? Mm -hmm. Somebody say Jesus, you own them. Now, all the book don't say that. This is what the book says. And next thing you know, you're going tit for tat with people when it comes to the book. You right and they wrong. But you go on in your confidence because you know that you're right. You know how you know you know how you know you're right? Because you're reading it. Mm -hmm. They're not reading what they say and what they believe. You read what you say and what you believe. But go ahead and read. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Uh-huh. And, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. It is a fountain of life. Because this is what's going to get us eternal life. It is the word of God and the fear of the Lord. This is what's going to get us eternal life. Go ahead and read. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life uh -huh. to depart from the snares of death. That's what you got coming if you don't do this. And the only way you're going to do this is that you, the fear moves you to do this. Fear's, excuse me, got to move you to do this. But if you don't do this, that's what you got forward to look forward to. It is death, and that is the lake of fire. Let's go now. Let's go to Job, the 28th chapter, Job 28. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12, Job 28 and 12. Because Job understood about fearing the Lord. He understood this. Job 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead and read. But where shall wisdom be found? Uh -huh. And where is the place of understanding? Uh -huh. Man knoweth not the price thereof. See, man don't understand the price thereof of wisdom. Because wisdom is going to get you eternal life. But men don't understand this. Go ahead and read. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Uh -huh. The depth saith, it is not in me. Uh -huh. and now, the this is what the deep says, what the sea says. The wisdom is not in me. You're not going to find it here. Uh huh. The depth saith, it is not in me. Uh -huh. And the sea saith, it is not with me. Go ahead. It cannot be gotten for gold. Uh, it cannot be gotten for gold. So you can't even buy wisdom with gold. Go ahead and read. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Uh huh. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir. It cannot be valued with the, now that's supposed to be the best gold right there, the gold of Ophir. I wish I could find it where it is. <laughs> so I can get me some of it. But go ahead and read. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, uh -huh. with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Talk about wisdom. None of these precious metals can be compared unto it. Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh-huh. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. Uh-huh. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. See, see the, the, uh, the wisdom cannot be compared unto the finest choices of gold. Skip to verse 20. Skip to verse 20. I'm telling you, man, this wisdom is really something. It will get you everlasting. It will get you a peaceful life while you're here, and it will give you, get you everlasting life when you're gone and the Lord wakes you up. Wisdom will. You better get it now. Go ahead and read. Verse 20. Uh-huh. Whence then cometh wisdom? Uh-huh. And where is the place of understanding? Whence comes wisdom and where is the place of understanding? Go ahead and read. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living uh -huh. and kept close from the fowls of the air. Go ahead. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. <laughs> Look at the Job breaking this thing down. He said, death and uh, destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. We heard the fame of, of wisdom. Go ahead and read. Verse 23. Uh-huh. God understandeth the way thereof. Uh-huh. And he knoweth the place See, thereof. God knows where wisdom is. He knows where wisdom is. Go ahead and read. For he looketh to the ends of the earth uh -huh. and seeth under the whole heaven. Skip to verse 28. Skip to verse 28. Go ahead. And unto man he said, uh -huh. Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. Oh. 
the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Go ahead and read. And to depart from evil uh -huh. is understanding. And when you depart from evil, that is understanding. Because many of us, we were out doing our thing, running the streets. I know I was. But then when this word dropped on me, I had to depart from that life. I had to leave that life alone. I had to leave that life alone and start walking in the word of God. I feared God and departed from evil. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to uh uh Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Psalm 104. And many uh, many people that have come into the word of God were uh, were hardened criminals. You know, doing all type of things out there in the street. But then once the word of God hit them, it changed their whole lives. Changed their whole life. And this is what happens, happens to many of us. Psalm 104, Psalm 104, and we're going to pick it up at verse 31. See, the proof is in the pudding. You know how you used to be. Every man and woman knows their own self, right? You know the things that you used to do and the things you used to say and how foul your mouth used to be. But once the word of God hit you, then all of that went away. And so we see the changes in ourselves. But we see the changes of ourselves because of the word of God. And we feared the Lord because we knew that if we didn't stop our wicked ways, that God was going to bring retribution upon us. We are at Psalm 104 and 31. Psalm 104 and 31. Go ahead and read it. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. Uh -huh. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and it trembleth. Uh -huh. He toucheth the hills uh -huh. and they smoke. You see that? He said he looketh on the earth and it trembleth. And uh, uh, he toucheth the hills and they smoke. Even the earth understands the fear of the Lord. Even the earth. Skip to verse 35. Skip to verse 30. See, man, but man don't understand. I'm going to show you even the devils. They are, are, are fear the Lord. But this man, mm -mm. he won't fear God. Skip to verse 35. Skip to verse 35. Go ahead and read. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. Ooh. Don't you know this is what the Lord is coming to do? Consume the uh, 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 sinners out of the earth. He comes to destroy the sinners out of the earth. And if you're one of them, you better change your ways. And you better get with the God of Israel. Read that again. Verse 35. Uh-huh. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. Uh-huh. And let the wicked be no more. Go ahead. Bless thou the Lord, uh -huh. O my soul. Uh -huh. Praise ye the Lord. Man, we are so blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are so blessed to be here and to hear the word of God. Because the ones that have passed away already, if they were wicked or sinners, the Lord is going to wake them up and kill them again. With the lake of fire. But if you have been hearing the word of God. You've been doing it. You are truly blessed. You don't realize how blessed you are. Now let's go now. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to Daniel the fourth chapter. Daniel four. Now over here in Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar. He was speaking about. The God of Israel. And Daniel's God, but he didn't fear him. He had no fear in him. <clears throat> Let's see what the Lord done to him. Because God is the one who set up kings and bring them, bring them down. He is the one who maketh rich and maketh poor. God is the one. Daniel 4, Daniel 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Daniel 4 and 1. When you get it, brother, start reading. Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. king unto all people, uh -huh. nations, and languages. See, the Lord had made him ruler over all the earth. Mm -hmm. 
at this time. He said, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all the people and na nations and languages, uh huh, that, that dwell in all the earth, uh huh. Peace be multiplied unto you. See, because Nebuchadnezzar, like I said, he was a world ruler. And he was a world ruler. Daniel had already told him that he was going to be a world ruler. Mm -hmm. And he wanted, just like he told uh, uh, um, the Greeks, that they were going to be world rulers. What was his name? Um, Alexander the Great. He was going to be a world ruler. And he was a world ruler. I mean, that Alexander the Great, he was really something, man. But he was a world ruler set up by the God of Israel. Wasn't just any God that set him up. The God of Israel is the one that set him up. But now we're looking at Nebuchadnezzar, the first world ruler. God set him up. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders uh -huh. that the high God had wrought toward me. Go ahead. How great are his signs. Uh-huh. And how mighty are his wonders. Now, this is Nebuchadnezzar saying this. This is Nebuchadnezzar saying this. So he knew about the God of Israel, but he didn't fear him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. How great are his signs. Uh-huh. And how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh -huh. And his dominion is from generation to generation. Now, this is Nebuchadnezzar saying this. Yep. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and it's his dominion from generation to generation. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Uh-huh. I saw a dream which made me afraid. Uh-huh. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Go ahead. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me. Uh-huh. That they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. So now Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. And so now he's getting all his, his wise men to come in to make known the interpretation of this dream. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't do it. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Uh-huh. And I took the dream before them. Go ahead. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. See, they couldn't make known the dream to ne Nebuchadnezzar. This dream came from the Lord. So they couldn't, they didn't understand this. But Daniel did. Go ahead and read. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, uh -huh. whose name was Belteshazzar, uh -huh. according to the name of my God. See, you know, once you go into captivity, your captor, he wants to change your name. Mm -hmm. So now his name is called Belteshazzar. Go ahead and read. According to the name of my God, uh -huh. and in whom is the spirit of the holy God. Go ahead. And before him, I told the dream, saying. Now, so Nebuchadnezzar. Even he understood that Daniel could interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. So now Daniel getting ready to interpret his dream. Skip to verse, uh, skip to verse 24. Skip to verse 24. Verse 24. Uh-huh. This is the interpretation, O king. Uh-huh. And this is the decree of the Most High, uh -huh. which has come upon my See, Lord, the king. This is the decree of the Most High. Mm -hmm. See, God is the one that put this dream on him. He is the one that put this, gave him this dream. Lo when the Lord give you a dream, he tried to send you a message. So pay attention to your dreams, because the Lord will send you a message. Go ahead and read. Verse 25. Uh-huh. That they shall drive thee from men, uh -huh. and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Go ahead. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Uh-oh. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar listening to this interpretation going to make you eat Grass like the ox, Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead and read. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Uh-huh. And seven times shall pass over thee. And seven years going to pass over you. You're going to eat, uh, uh, eat grass like an ox, Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead and read. Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Uh-huh. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. Now, skip to verse, uh, uh, skip to verse uh, 27. Skip to verse 27. Go ahead and read it. Verse 27. Uh-huh. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be accepted, 
acceptable unto He's you. He's telling them, look, you know, listen to me. Listen to me, because you can get out of this. You can get out of this. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, O king, uh -huh. let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, uh -huh. and break off thy sins by righteousness. He said, look, stop sinning before the Lord, and start walking in righteousness before God. So he had a chance to get out of this. But Nebuchadnezzar, in his arrogance, mm -mm. look at what he's going to say. Go ahead and read. And break off thy sins by righteousness uh -huh. and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. See, he was a tyrant to the poor. He was a tyrant at this time to the poor. And so Daniel trying to tell him how to resolve this matter. Because you're going to eat grass like an ox for seven years. This is what you need to do. But Nebuchadnezzar, in his arrogance, see, he wouldn't listen. And so what happened? Keep reading. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Uh-huh. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Uh-huh. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Uh-huh. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon uh -huh. that I have built for Oh, the you see that? Is not this great, but he bragging now. Is not this great Babylon that I have built? See, he was giving God the praise at first. Now he's praising himself. He's bragging. No fear of the Lord. He didn't say, is not this great Babylon in this palace which the Lord have given unto me? He didn't say that. He's bragging on himself. Start it again, brother. Verse 30. Uh-uh, verse 29. Verse 29. Yeah. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Uh-huh. The king spake Go ahead. and said, Is not this great Babylon uh -huh. that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power Go ahead. and for the honor of my majesty? For the, for my, I did this. In other words, for my majesty and for my honor. I've done this. Don't you know that Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom is in ruins right now? See, that's how we know that the Bible is true. The Lord said that Babylon was going to be in desolation. You can go right on your internet right now and go on YouTube and pull up Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. And you will see that it is, is, it is in ruins right now. And they're trying to make it a tourist attraction. The Bible tells you about Nebuchadnezzar's uh, uh, Babylon. But that's for the people who don't believe that uh, the Bible is true. Because I was just listening to some videos this week, and they were talking about how the Bible is not true and, uh, and none of this. It's a bunch of stories. But see, they haven't went and did any research. Because Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon is still in ruins right now today. In what we call present-day Iraq, it is still in ruins. And like I said, they're trying to make it a tourist attraction right now. But Daniel told us about it. Daniel told us about it. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Verse 31. Uh-huh. While the word was in the king's mouth, uh -huh. there fell a voice from heaven, uh -huh. saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. to thee it is spoken. Go ahead. The kingdom is departed from thee. The kingdom is departed while he was doing all this bragging about himself. Mm -hmm. Here comes the word of God. And the word of God says, thy, king is, thy kingdom is departed from thee. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 32. Uh-huh. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Uh-huh. All because he was giving the Lord some praise, but he mm -hmm. didn't fear God. Mm -hmm. He didn't fear him. Start that again. Verse 32. Uh-huh. And they shall drive thee from men. Uh-huh. And thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Go ahead. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Uh-huh. And seven times shall pass over thee. Seven times. Can you imagine that? He down on the ground eating grass like an ox, and he lived. Hmm. He lived for seven years eating grass like an ox. That tells you something right there. You don't need meat. We don't need meat. God gave us that a little extra for something to eat to fill your belly up, but you can eat vegetables and live. You don't need, you can eat grass. 
<laughs> See how strong the gorillas are? Do they eat any meat? Nope. They don't eat no, they eat fruit and vegetables. But anyway. <laughs> Go ahead and read. What verse are you? Uh, middle 32. Start it over. 32. Uh-huh. And they shall drive thee from men. Uh-huh. And thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Go ahead. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Uh-huh. And seven times shall pass over thee. Uh-huh. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom until of men. Until you know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Mm-hmm. You're going to know this. Could have put him on the ground for one year. Lord said, no, seven years. You're going to eat grass like an ox. What happened? Go ahead. Verse 33. Uh, the end of 32. Uh, okay, go ahead. High rule of in the kingdom of men uh-huh. and give it, it to whomsoever he will. Go ahead. 33. Uh-huh. The same hour was the thing fulfilled ooh, upon ooh, that. Ooh, ooh. Say that same hour. We just fell down on his, on his hands and knees and start eating grass like an ox. Now, tell me that ain't power. That is power. Now, you got a king now. A king. Never, a world ruler. He ruling the world at this time. God say, you look, you're going to find out who ruling, who actually ruling this world. It is me that is ruling, not me. I'm just saying the Lord. It is I that rule this world. And you talking about this world ruler dropped down on his hands and knees and was made to eat grass for seven years like an ox. The God of Israel. Now, if you don't fear now, just hold on. Let me show you something else. Keep reading. 33. Uh Uh-huh. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. Uh Uh-huh. And he was driven from men. Go ahead. And did eat grass as oxen. Uh Uh-huh. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. I know the men around him, they had to look at him like, man, what's wrong with him? He done went crazy. But he did what God had told Daniel that he was going to do. You're going to eat grass like an ox for seven years. Go ahead. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven uh-huh. till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. Ooh, that reminds me, because I could have put this in the lesson too. Saddam Hussein, when they found him, where was he at? In a hole. Hair grown out, nails long and everything. And guess what? It was in the same country. We call it present-day Iraq, but that is actually Babylon. And so the Lord brought uh, Saddam Hussein, put him in a hole, brought, put uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar on his knees to eat grass for seven years like an ox, and then put Saddam Hussein in a hole. He crawled around in a hole in underground like a rat in the same country. In the same country. The God of Israel, he don't play. You better fear him. You better fear the God of Israel. Go ahead and read. And his nails like bird's claws. Uh Uh-huh. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes into heaven. Uh Uh-huh. And my understanding. Now, now, look, look. He done lifted up his eyes to heaven. Now, his understanding, they came back. Can you you imagine that? God took his mind away from him that he's eating grass like an ox. You ain't nothing but an animal. God took his mouth and then turned around and gave it back to him. That is power. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that verse again. Verse 34. Uh Uh-huh. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. And that lets me know something. People that have lost their mind, God can give it back to them. Mm -hmm. He can give it back to them if he wants to. Go ahead and finish that. Lifted up my eyes into heaven, uh-huh. and my understanding returned unto me. Uh-huh. And I blessed the Most High. You see what he did now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he only got some fear in him now, right? Yes, sir. He said, and I blessed the Most High. He got some understanding and some fear in him now. He was speaking highly of the Lord God of Israel at first, but then he didn't have no fear. Now look at him. Now look at him. And at the end of the days, 
I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. Go ahead and read. And I praised and honored him. See that? Now he gave me praise and honor. Go ahead and finish that. And I praised and honored him uh -huh. that liveth forever. Go ahead. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. Uh -huh. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And his kingdom is from generation. He's praising and fearing yeah. him now, right? <laughs> you may, look, you drop me down on the ground for one day to eat grass like an ox, and I'm fearing. <laughs> One day, let alone seven years. <coughs> Let's go now. And this, you, can you imagine, that? this guy's a world, I'm ruling the world, but now I'm eating grass like an ox. Not for one year, but for seven years. Man, let's go now. Let's go to Psalm 73. This is the God to be, don't play with this God. This is the God to be feared right here. Mm -hmm. Psalm 73, Psalm 73, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalm 73 and 1. This ain't the one to play with right here. Like people say, I ain't the one to play with. God is not the one. The God of Israel, he ain't the one to play with. <laughs> this is the one you're not, not to play with right here. Psalm 73, Psalm 73 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Truly, God, God is good to Israel. Uh-huh. Even to such as are of a clean heart. See, he is good to the ones that's got a clean heart. If you got a righteous mind, you're doing the right thing before him, he is good to you. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Uh-huh. My steps had well nigh slipped. Go ahead. For I was envious at the foolish. I was envious of the foolish. You know how they say birds of a feather flock together? Well, then you better stop flocking with them foolish birds. If you if you flocking with the foolish birds, you better stop flocking with them. Read that again. Verse three. Uh huh. For I was envious at the foolish. Uh huh. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, you see the wicked do they doing good? They making money hand over fist. But they wicked. They don't fear God. Go ahead and read. Verse 4, uh -huh. for there are no bands in their depth, uh -huh. but their strength is firm. Go ahead. They are not in trouble as other men. See, they don't have problems like other men. You know, they don't have money problems like, like I do <laughs> and like a lot of us do, right? That's not one of their problems. So, therefore, they don't fear God. Go ahead and read. They are not in trouble as other men. Uh -huh. Neither are they plagued like other men. Go ahead. Therefore, pride compasses them uh -huh. ab about as a chain. Uh -huh. Violence covers them as a garment. See, they don't, they, you know, prideful, you know, they up here and everybody else down here. You know, they, they uh, uh, pour, pour out a little violence, you know what I'm saying, to get what they want, do things, you know, kill people to get what they want. They don't care. That's because they don't have no fear of God. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Skip to verse 8. Skip to verse 8. Go ahead. Verse 8. Uh-huh. They are corrupt. Uh-huh. And speak wickedly. Go ahead. Concerning oppression. Uh-huh. They speak lawfully. See, they speak lawfully. They speak up here. Their heads are in the clouds. Right? Speak down to everybody else. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Uh-huh. They set their mouth against the heavens. Uh, oh, they even set their mouths against heaven. Like Nebuchadnezzar did, right? Yep. He said, I, I'm the one that's got all this glory and majesty. This was gotten by my hand. You know, some rich people, the Lord didn't do this. I've done this on my own. God didn't do this for me. But God is the one that set up the rich and the poor. Go ahead and read. They set their mouth against the heavens. Uh -huh. And their tongue walketh through the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, his people. Look at, look at, look at the rich people now. He buying up farms and stuff, taking the seeds out of the fruit and the vegetables and everything. They talking about population control, all of these things. Speaking against the heavens, speaking against who are you to say how many people should be on the earth? If God if allows men to be on the earth, then God allows men to be on the earth. That's not our call. That's not the call of men. But to say who's going to be on the earth and how many people should be on the earth. That's not man's call. 
God brings whom he wants to be here and not be here. That's why you got babies dying in the womb. That is God's call, not man's. <clears throat> but yet, in, the, in our generation, in generations prior to ours, they talk, they talk about population control. They even want to control the food that men eat. Taking the seeds out of the fruits and the vegetables and everything. Who are you? you don't you know one day you're going to pay for that? You think you're going to get, let me just show you something. Keep reading. What verse you at? Verse 11. Uh-huh. And they say, how do if God know? Uh-huh. And is there knowledge in the most high? See, they don't give no regard to God at all. Is there knowledge in the most high? He ain't got no knowledge. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. Uh-huh. Behold, these are the ungodly uh -huh. who prosper in the world. Oh, now you know who the Lord really talking about, the ones that's prospering in the world. Mm -hmm. He said, these are the ungodly. These are the ungodly. Now, now watch it now. Because you got some big ministers that have prospered too, right? Mm -hmm. But you see what the God just called them, what, the, what, the, what he had uh, uh, the psalmist to call them, the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Now watch out now, because he's not just talking about the, the rich people that, that, uh, uh, that don't worship God. He's just talking to the rich people that say they worship in God. Talking to them too. Go ahead and read. Read that verse again. Verse 12. Uh-huh. Behold, these are the ungodly uh -huh. who prosper in the world. Go ahead. They increase in riches. They increase in riches. They increase, not just the ones that don't believe in God, but the ones that say they believe in God as well. They increase in riches. Go ahead and read. Verse <coughs> 13. Uh-huh. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain uh -huh. and washed my hands in innocence. Uh-huh. Skip to verse uh skip to verse 17. Go ahead. Verse 17. <coughs> now David is watching all of this. He's seeing how the the uh the, uh, the rich people, how they prosper and everything. He envious of it. But there is a punishment that's gonna be that's gonna come to these people like this. There's a punishment one day they got coming. You do not want to be one of these people right here. Now I wouldn't mind having some money. But I don't want to get rich and arrogant and all like that and saying, who is the Lord? Go ahead and read. What verse? 17, right? Verse Go 17. Uh-huh. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, uh -huh. then understood I therein. Oh. See, when he went into the, went into the house of God and heard the word, mm -hmm. he understood what their end is going to be now. So now I'm not so envious now. <laughs> First he was envious, right? Now he's not so envious. Read that again. 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, uh -huh. then understood I therein. Now I understand what their end is going to be. So I don't want to be one of these. Go ahead and read. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Uh -huh. Thou casted them down into destruction. Ooh. See what's going to happen to the rich? The, the ones that's not rich and they're not rich towards God? <coughs> they're going to be cast down into destruction. Go ahead and read. How are they brought into desolation? Uh-huh. As in a moment. Go ahead. They are utterly consumed with terrors. Ooh. In a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. Meaning that terror is going to come over them in a moment. Think about that for a minute. I'm doing good, everything going, I'm on my yacht and everything. Now that yacht hits a big, a big rock. Now you consume with terror. You get ready to go under. The God, the, the God of Israel, he don't play. See, you think, you know, men think that they doing good and they prospering in the world and I've got all this money and God is the one that's doing this. But God is the one that's going to take it from you too. Don't you know, well, I ain't going to even talk about this. I'll be ready to talk about the people on the Titanic. You had a lot of rich, rich people on there, right? People that had prospered and, you know, doing good at that time. But then they hit that big rock. That was it for them. 
Didn't have no fear of the Lord. Didn't have no fear of the Lord. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Verse 20. Uh-huh. As a dream when one awakens, uh-huh. so, O oh Lord, when thou awakest, uh-huh. thou shalt despise their image. So he said, as a dream when one awakens, right? Let's go now. Let's go to Job, the seventh chapter. Back up to Job, the seventh chapter. Because the Lord, he will terrorize you in your dream. He will terrorize you in your dream. And you be like, man, I need to wake up from this. You ever had that dream where you were falling? And then you had to wake up? (laughs) Job 7 and 13, Job 7. Who you think was doing that to you? The Lord. Job Job 7, Job 7 and 13, Job 7 and 13. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. When I say... My bed shall comfort me. Uh huh. My couch shall ease my complaint. Look, I'm getting ready to lay down and get me some sleep. I said that last night. It was a long day yesterday. I'm getting ready to go. When I go, I'm getting up under the covers. <coughs> so you think when you get ready to go to bed that, hey, man, I'm getting ready to get me some sleep. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be refreshed in the morning. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to do it all over again. Right? Go to work and, you know, enjoy my day. Because yesterday was a beautiful day. Right? It started off, it was real warm and everything and all of that. Daughter, granddaughter graduated yesterday. Next thing you know, here come that chill. I told my daughter, put on your jacket. But she wouldn't put it on. And she was one of, one of the ones out there freezing. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead and read, brother. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Then thou scarest me with dreams. Oh, then thou scarest me with dreams. Go ahead and read. And terrifies me through visions. Ooh, and terrify me through visions. Because this is the Lord right here. He will do that to you. He will terrorize you in your dreams and show you visions that will terrify you. See, this is the God of Israel. You, you know, understand who we are dealing with. He will come to you in your dream and terrify you. Read that verse again, 14. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Then thou scarest me with dreams. Then thou scarest me with dreams. Uh-huh. And terrifies me through visions. And terrifies me through visions. The Lord will come after you in a dream. And he, that's only to warn you. That's only to warn you. Hey, look, I'm watching you. You better get yourself together. I'm watching you. And I'm going to show you that I'm watching you. Boom! Terrorizing you in a dream. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. Uh Uh-huh. So that my soul chooseth strangling Uh and death rather than my life. He said, look, I'd rather rather die than to be terrorized in my dream. Go ahead and read. Because when the Lord put it on you, he put it on you. He makes sure you know that this from me. Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. I loathe it. Uh-huh. I would not live always. Go ahead. Let me alone. Uh-huh. For my days are vanity. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 2 Corinthians 5. Because they understood this, that the Lord, he would terrorize you. They understood this. Men now, they, they ain't worried about no God. That's the last thing on their mind is God. 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. Go ahead and read. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's enough to terrorize you right there. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to. Us uh, uh, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Go ahead and read. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. See, you're going to be judged according to the things that you have done. Whether you walk righteous before the Lord or you walked in unrighteousness before the Lord. You're going to be judged by that. And most assuredly, what you're going to be judged by is the law of God. That's how he's going to judge you. According to whether you sin or according to whether you didn't sin. If you was a liar, that's what he's going to judge you by. You liar. If you were a thief, 
That's what you're going to be judged by. You were a thief. You're going around boosting. He's going to judge you according to that. The wicked is not going to go unpunished. Go ahead and read. That everyone may receive the things done in his body uh -huh. according to that he have done, go ahead. whether it be good or bad. Whether it is good. or So the Lord is watching you. He is watching all of us. That's how he knows who to judge. How does he know who to judge, the ones that throw in the lake of fire, the ones that let in the kingdom, except he's watching us? How would he know that? So God is watching every individual. I don't care if you're rich or if you're poor. Because they middle class, you know. <laughs> Go ahead and read that next verse. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Because he will terrorize you. He will come to you in your dream or while you're walking down the street. You can be sitting in your car. He'll terrorize you in your car. Knowing that for the terror of the Lord, uh-huh. We persuade men. We persuade men. We try to tell men, look, this is what thus said the Lord. You're supposed to keep the Lord's Sabbath. You're not going to heaven. You're going to the grave when you die, and you're going to be there until the first or the second resurrection. Because we know the terror of the Lord. So we persuade men, uh-huh. But we are made manifest unto God. Uh -huh. And I trust also, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Now, let's go now. Let's go to James, the second chapter, James 2. We're going to read one verse right here. Verse 19, James 2 and 19. The Lord don't play, man. He, he will come to you in your dream, whether you're walking down the street, you, uh, 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 you in your car, he'll come to you anywhere you are, and he will terrorize you. Put that fear in you. James 2 and 19. Am I scaring you yet? Because I am. Because <laughs> I'm putting this lesson together. I'm like, man, the Lord, he is something else, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, James 2. James 2 and 19, you do not want to cross the God of Israel. James 2 and 19, go ahead and read it. Because if you do good, he'll do good to you. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted now. If you do righteous before the Lord, he will do good unto you. He will bless you. But if you cross him, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hell to pay. James 2 and 19, go ahead and read it. Thou believest that there is one God. Uh-huh. Thou doest well. Go ahead. The devils also believe uh -huh. and tremble. Ooh. The devils believe and they tremble. This man ain't got sense enough to tremble at the word of God. He don't have sense enough to tremble at God. But the devils, see, they know what's going to happen to them. They done, they done heard the book and read the book and all that. They know what's going to happen to them. They know what their end is going to be. That is the evil angels, the devils. They know what their end is going to be. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now let me show you how much they tremble. Let me show you. Let's go to, uh, let's go, well, first before we go there, let me just bring, I'm going to bring this in. Then we're going to get back to the devils and them trembling. Let's go to Zephaniah first. Zephaniah, the third chapter. We're going to get back to the devils in just a second. Zephaniah, the third chapter, and verse 8. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Because look, cause remember we read earlier that God is coming to judge the world? He's coming to judge the earth. Zephaniah 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. When you get it, brother, start reading. Zephaniah 3 and verse 8. Eight. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest. Uh uh, Zephaniah three. One book back, one book back. Go ahead. Therefore, 
Wait ye upon me, uh-huh. saith the Lord. Wait upon me, saith the Lord. Go ahead and read. Until the day that I rise up to the prey. Uh, who is the prey? That is the wicked. That is the prey. It is the wicked. What is he going to do? For my determination is to gather the nations uh-huh. that I may assemble the kingdoms Go ahead. to pour upon them my indignation. Ooh. This is what the Lord is ultimately coming to do, to pour out his wrath upon the nations. That's enough to fear. That's enough to fear right there. <laughs> he said, uh, therefore, wait upon me. He's talking to the righteous. He said, therefore, wait upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination to gather the, the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation. Uh-huh. Even all my fierce anger. Go ahead. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Ooh. All the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Go ahead. Verse 9. For then will I turn to the people of pure language. See, I just want to put a time on it, just so you know that this is future right here. He says, for then will I turn to the people of pure language, uh-huh. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And this, this is at the coming of the Lord. He's going to uh, turn the people to a pure language. We all are going to be speaking the same language. Right now, everybody's talking different languages. But at this time, everybody will be speaking the same language. And they're going to be talking about the God of Israel. <laughs> That's what they're going to be talking about. Let's go now. We're going to go now. We're going back to the devils. I want to bring you here for a reason. But let's go back to the devil. Let's go back to the devil. Because he said the devils, they believe God and tremble, right? Let's go now. Matthew, the eighth chapter. Matthew, the eighth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 28. Matthew 8. And 28. Now, you know, man, not, man don't have sense enough to tremble before the God of Israel. But the devils, they got sense enough to tremble because they know what their end is going to Man doesn't understand what his fate is going to be if he doesn't serve the God of Israel. He don't understand that. <coughs> Matthew 8 and 28. Matthew 8 and 28. Go ahead and read. And when he was come to the other side and to the country of the Gerges, Ger, of the Gergesenes, uh-huh. there met him two possessed with devils uh-huh. coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So now he come, his two men, that, I mean a man that right here possessed with devils. Go ahead and read. And behold, uh-huh. they cried out, uh-huh. saying, Go ahead. What have we now to do? Now they speaking through. To this, through this man now. What have we to do? Uh-huh. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, uh-huh. the Son of God? Uh-huh. Are thou come hither to torment us before the time? Ooh, see, they had some fear. They had some fear. These are devils right here. They had some fear. They said, what have we to do with thee, O Jesus, Son of God? Have you come to torment us before our time? They had some fear of the Lord. Because they know what their fate is. They know what their end is going to be. It, and it is torment. It is the lake of fire. They know this. I'm going to show you. Go ahead and read. Verse 30. Uh-huh. And there was a good way off uh-huh. from them and heard of many swine feeding. Go ahead. So the devils besought him. Uh-huh. So the devils. Now they petitioned the Lord now. They ask, what, what, can you do us this favor? <laughs> so the devils besought him, saying, uh-huh. If thou, if thou cast us out, uh-huh. suffer us to go away into the herd Look, of swine. Look, if you don't cast us out, can you cast us into the herd of that swine over there? Now, you know, everybody know in here that swine, that's an unclean animal. He didn't say, can you cast us out to those lambs over there? Because, you know, people got to eat them lambs. <laughs> so can you cast us out into that swine over there? Now look how merciful Jesus is to these devils right here. Look how merciful he is to them. Read it again, Brother Mark. 31. Uh-huh. So the devils besought him. Uh, now they petitioned, they begging him like, you know, 
Can you do us this favor right here? <laughs> See that herd of swine? Can you cast us out that herd of swine right there? Go ahead and read. So the devils besought him, uh -huh. saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Go. You see how merciful the Lord is even to the devils. So how much more merciful is he to men? Mm -hmm. How much more merciful is he to men? So he said, go. Uh-huh. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. Uh-huh. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place. They're like, we don't want you and us neither. So they, <laughs> so they ran down into the sea. Uh-huh. De violently down the steep place into the sea uh -huh. and perished in the waters. And perished in the waters. But you see, they said, Lord, have you come to torment us before our time? Because they know at a point in time they're going to be tormented in the lake of fire. They know this. Men, not this smart. Men are not this smart. They don't understand that they are one day going to be tormented in the lake of fire. Let's go to Revelations, the 20th chapter. Now, this is the number one devil right here. This is the devil. <laughs> Revelations 20 and 1. Revelations 20 and 1. Let me show you something. He's not that bad like everybody trying to make him out to be. Satan is not that bad. People try to make Satan out to be, uh, you know, bad like God or, you know, he in competition with the Lord. Uh-uh. Ain't no competition with God and Satan, or the Lord and Satan. Revelations 20, let me show you. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw an angel, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. having the key of the bottomless pit. Go ahead. And the great chain in his hand. Who you think sent this angel down? It is God. He is the one who sent this angel down. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the ball in his pit and a great chain in his hand. Now, what is he going to do with this chain? Go ahead and read. And he laid hold on the, on the dragon, uh -huh. that old serpent, Go ahead. which is the devil and Satan, uh -huh. and bound him a thousand years. Ooh, bound him with a chain. <laughs> he probably, let me go, let me go. You ain't going nowhere. He got, he's got angels that's more powerful than Satan. And will come and grab Satan and bound him up for a thousand years. Can you imagine that? Now, this is the baddest one that's walking on the planet, supposed to be, right? <laughs> but, the, but the Lord sent down an angel, badder than him, uh, uh, chain him up and cast him in a pit for a thousand years. So he's not that bad then, is he? Go ahead and read. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him uh -huh. that he should receive the nation's note that he should wait deceive. A he, wait a minute, he can't get out this pit he was in? I thought he was so bad. Lord, lock him up and you're going to be there for a thousand years and that's where he's going to be when the Lord decide to let him go. Verse 3 again. And cast him into the bottomless pit. Uh -huh. And shut him up. Go ahead. And set a seal upon him. Uh -huh. That he should deceive the nations no more. Uh -huh. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Uh -huh. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. But who's going to let him out, though? The Lord is going to let him out. Had that angel gone down there, let him out the pit, take the chains off of him. But guess what Satan's going to do? He's going to roam the earth again. And he's going to deceive men again. As the sands cover the sea. But he's going to be bound for a thousand years. Man has this time to get himself together. He got this time to get himself together. Without no interference from the peanut gallery. <laughs> from Satan and his, from Satan, in other words. No interference. Now I know you can get yourself together because now you don't have Satan to be putting them messages in your head that you can go off and sin against the Lord. But we're going to come back to this in one minute. Let's go to Luke, the 10th chapter. We're going to come back to Satan in a minute. Luke, the 10th chapter. 
Luke 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Luke 10 and 17. See, the, the devils, they tremble at the Lord. They fear the Lord. But men, they don't fear the Lord. Although we have read that God is coming to judge this earth. He is coming to judge this earth. And men, they understand that they're around the corner is some impending doom. They understand it, but still they go on with their daily lives and don't fear God at all. Men know, because you see that it's a, a show that used to come on called Doomsday. I don't even know if it still come on or not. It's called Doomsday. Men know that it is an impending doom or right around the corner. They know this. But yet they still don't fear God. Uh, Luke 10 and 17. Luke 10 and 17. Go ahead and read it. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, uh -huh. Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. See, the devils are subject unto man through the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Through the name of Jesus. You can say, get thee behind me, Satan, mm -hmm. and he will leave you. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Go ahead. I beheld Satan as lightning, as lightning fall from heaven. Ooh, who's the one who kicked him out? The Lord is. The Lord is the one that kicked him out. See, he ain't bad. Not only did the Lord kick him out, kick him out of heaven, but he's gonna lock him up for a thousand years. But I'm gonna show you ultimately where he's going. Go ahead and read. 19. Uh-huh. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents uh -huh. and scorpions. Go ahead. And over all the and over all the power of the enemy. Uh -huh. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Go ahead. Notwithstanding and this notwithstanding and this rejoice not uh -huh. that the spirit are subject unto you. That the spirits are subject unto you. See what he just called say? A spirit. And this is what devils are. They are spirits. And what are spirits? They are angels. Go ahead and read. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Jude, the sixth verse. Jude, the sixth verse. And we're, gonna, uh, we're picking it up at Jude, the sixth verse. It's only one chapter right before Revelations. Jude, the sixth verse. Look how, look how powerful our God is. Look how, he done took the number one enemy, man's enemy, and cast him out of heaven. Then we saw he locked him up for a thousand years. Then he loosed them out, you know, doing everything that he wants to, that he wants to do to Satan. And you don't see Satan talking back, fighting back, none of this. Jude, the sixth verse. Go ahead and read it. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, uh -huh. he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness uh -huh. until the until the day until the judgment and and until the judgment of the great day. See, this is where they are now. This is how powerful our God is. He has them under chains of darkness. They can see us, but we can't see them. You know why? Because if they, we could see them, then we wouldn't know who's a good angel, who's a bad angel. Then they start telling us to do this and telling us, telling us to do that, and we start doing it. Now you're going contrary to the Lord, and you know where you're going. Straight to the lake of fire. Just the same place where they're going. The same place where they are going. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left, but left their own habitation, he have reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So when God judges man, he's going to judge these angels too. When he throws men in the lake of fire, he's going to throw these angels in the lake of fire too. They are not getting away with their wickedness neither. You better fear this God. You better fear the God of Israel. Let's go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew 25. Matthew 25 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 31, Matthew 25 and 31. When you get it, brother, start reading. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory uh -huh. and all the holy angels with him, Go ahead. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Uh -huh. and, be and before him shall be gathered all nations, uh -huh. and he shall separate them one from another. See, look at this. Nobody's getting away with their wickedness. You see that? And before him shall be gathered what? All nations. The God of Israel. All nations going to be gathered before him. You see anybody else in any other religion saying this? Mm -mm. All nations going to be gathered before the God of Israel. And what's going to happen? Go ahead. And he shall separate them one from another. Uh-huh. As a shepherd divide of his sheep from the goats. Now, how does he know to do this? Except he's watching you. He's watching each individual. And he's got seven angels that's going to and fro through the earth and watching each individual. So he's going to separate the goats and the sheep, right? Skip to verse 31. Go ahead. No, read verse 33. Read verse 33. Go ahead. 33. Uh-huh. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, uh -huh. but the goats on his left. Now, now, where's the left going? Skip to verse 41. Because if the left going one way, then the right going another way. We're going to get to the left. Not like Beyonce say, to the left, to the left. You don't want to go to the left at this time. <laughs> you don't want to be on the left hand at this time. Skip to verse 41. Go ahead and read that. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, uh -huh. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Oh, you see what he said? Depart from me, ye everlasting uh, 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 Depart from me. Uh -uh. Depart from me, ye everlasting, ye cursed, I'm sorry, unto everlasting fire. Now that's enough to scare anybody. Everlasting fire, you ain't going to never come out of there. Some people say, well, you're not going to burn forever. What this just said right here. Everlasting. I anybody scared like I am yet? That's why I'm stuttering. Because I'm scared. <laughs> Read that one more time, brother. 41. Uh huh. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Uh huh. Depart from me, ye cursed. Depart from me, ye cursed. Uh huh. Into everlasting fire. Into everlasting fire. Go ahead. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Prepare for the devil and his angels. See, they understood where they were going or where they are going. They're going into everlasting fire. That's why they asked Jesus, are you come to torment us before our time? Cast us in the herd, in that, uh, uh, herd of swine over there. Because they know that they are going to everlasting fire. Men are the ones that don't understand this. Because they did, then our the Sabbath churches be full. Instead of on the first day of the week. The one, the, they fool. But one day the Lord going to bust those clouds open and every eye is going to see them. Then men are going to fear. Then they're going to fear. Those things that the Israelites were teaching is true. The God of Israel, he actually exists. <laughs> Let's go to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation 20th chapter. Let's see what's going to happen to Satan. Revelations 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Revelations 20, we're going to read that one verse, verse 10. Go ahead and read it. Revelations 20 and verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. You see what's going to happen to Satan? He's going, did you see him say, no, I'm not? You didn't hear him say that, did you? You heard him talk in other words, you, uh, in other uh, uh, scriptures when he was talking to Jesus, <laughs> right? Do you hear him saying anything right here? Read that again. 
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and uh, brimstone, uh -huh. where the beast and the false prophet are. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. So much for the people say, well, you're not going to burn forever. What book are you reading? You better get your head in this one right here. Because you must be reading some other book. <laughs> Let's go now. Let's go to Daniel, the sixth chapter. We got two more. Daniel, the sixth chapter. And Daniel pretty much summed it up right here. Daniel 6 and 25. Daniel 6 and 25. He summed it up right here. Daniel 6 and 25. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, uh -huh. nations, and languages. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages uh -huh. that dwell in all the earth. Now, Darius right here, he was a world ruler. He was a world ruler. Now, look at what he's writing to all the nations. Go ahead and read. Peace be multiplied unto you. Uh -huh. I make a decree. I make a decree. This is a law. I make a decree. Uh-huh. That in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Ooh. Somebody need to let the people know this now. Need to, need to let the nations know this now. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Fear before him. And I'm making that decree now. You better fear before the God of Daniel, the God of Israel. Go ahead and read. For he is the living God. He is the living God. Uh-huh. And steadfast forever. Go ahead. And his kingdom that which shall and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Uh-huh. And his dominion shall be even unto the end. Uh-huh. He delivereth and rescueth. And he worketh signs and wonders in heaven uh -huh. and in earth. Go ahead. Who have delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. He have delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Now, let's go now. You better fear before the God of Daniel, and that's the God of Israel. Let's go now. Let's go to Proverbs, the eighth chapter. Proverbs 8. We got one more after this. Proverbs 8. And we are going to pick it up. At verse 13, Proverbs 8 and 13. Go ahead and read it. Proverbs 8 and 13. We got one more after this. Proverbs 8. And 13. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's the fear of the Lord. When you stop doing, when you stop sinning before the Lord, then that's when you're showing some fear towards the Lord. When you stop sinning before him. So he said, uh, 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 the, uh, read it again. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Uh huh. Pride and arrogancy. Uh huh. And the evil way. Pride and arrogancy, because you got a lot of men that are prideful and arrogant. And he said, "And the evil way." Uh huh. And the fro and the forward mouth. Uh huh. Do I hate? And the forward mouth. Do I hate? Let's go to Proverbs. Back up to Proverbs, the third chapter. This will be last. Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Proverbs 3 and 7. Go ahead. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Uh-huh. Fear the Lord. Go ahead. And depart from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Go ahead and read. It shall be help to thy neighbor. Uh-huh. And morrow to thy bones. Uh-huh. So he said, he said, it shall be help to thy navel and moral to thy bones. So you're going to be healthy. This is a healthy thing to fear God. And there you have it. 
the, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Thank you. Now we're going to have the reading of the announcements. Grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel's Church of the Living God Learning Center. If, th if this is your first visit, we hope you'll come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. There is no eating or drinking in the sanctuary with the exception of water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of the Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers, please remove any head covering upon entering the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, fleece jogging pants, shorts, tight-fitting pants, or any other revealing attire. Please wear belts if necessary. Sisters, you must have a head covering. This is required. Hats, scarves, etc. Do not wear pants, shorts, skorts, midriffs, or see-through blouses, many dresses, many skirts, halter tops of any kind, revealing splits, tight-fitting or cleavage revealing attire. Please wear modest apparel only. We have Bible and scarves available for visitors. If you use a Bible and scarf that belongs to Israel's Church of the Living God, please return it prior to leaving. You can visit our Facebook page at Israel's Church of the Living God to watch our Sabbath lessons and view another page from my notebook by Pastor Russ live every Wednesday. And you can also post questions or comments. All questions will be answered according to the Bible. Click the Facebook like button to see our daily posts in your news feed. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at ICOTLG567 to view recorded Sabbath lessons. In an effort to expand the church ministry, we have established the building fund. You can make your secure donations or payments online using our PayPal account at israelschurch.org. Or you can send your donations to the attention of ICOTLG at P.O. Box 8933. Waukegan, Illinois, 60079. We thank you for your past contributions contributions, and hope for your continued support. Free will donations are welcome and appreciated. Israel's Church of the Living God, Learn, Living God Learning Center's address is 1225 Elmwood Avenue, Waukegan, Illinois, 60085. Prayer and spiritual counseling. If you need prayer or spiritual counseling, give us a call at 847-636-4792 or 847-246-4421. Or you can see Brother Tyrone or Brother James. Baptism and online viewers. For our online viewers, we would like to connect with you. And if you would like to be baptized, please contact us at 847 847- 636-4792 or 847-246-4421. Sabbath lunch. If you brought a lunch, you and your family are welcome to eat in the lunchroom. Holy days. For a list of holy days for 2024, please visit our website at israelschurch.org. The Feast of Pentecost begins Saturday, June 15th and end Sunday, June 16th at sundown. Service will be Sunday, June 16th at 1.30 p.m. Come join us. Live Q&A every Thursday night at 7 p.m. All questions will be answered according to the scripture. The phone number is 605-313-4166, and the code to type in is 196-899 followed by the pound sign. We started a Friday night prayer line. All are welcome to join this conference call. Please call at 6.55 p.m. and we'll begin promptly at 7 p.m. The phone number is 605-313-4166 and the code to type in is 196-899, followed by the pound sign. Please share this lesson with your family and friends on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Finally, brothers and sisters, please continue to pray for one another 
These are today's Sabbath announcements. Um, we're going to have a short meeting afterwards, after class. We're going to have a short meeting. We're going to talk about the Feast of Pentecost, and uh, we're going to get the menu together. So um, all the Feast Committee hang around. All right, and we'll try to get up out of here. All right, we want to remind everybody to pray for our brothers and sisters that are sick and shut in, okay? All right, let's stand face the rules and close out. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. In Jesus' holy and righteous righteous name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.